So, so what was it? So, like, the idea of critiquing someone that is more... Better than you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I feel like there's a sentiment surrounding stuff like that. Mm. With, like, the idea that, number one, if someone's not as talented as you, you should completely disregard their opinion um, if they give Somewhere. it you. And number two, the idea that you have no place critiquing someone's work if you couldn't produce it yourself. I think both are bullshit, though. Yeah, I would understand. Completely. Com yeah, completely. Because, like, as an artist, firstly, critiquing another artist's work that's better than you, there's so much value to be found in that. Because So, say, I, I, th I had this thought when I was listening to the 1975 mm. um, Notes on a Conditional Form I was listening to. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of critiques to be There's had. There's a lot of critiques to be made, you know what I mean? Some great songs on there. I was still listening to it years after it came out as a fan, you know what I mean? Yeah. But say something like listen to people compared to Shiny Collarbone. There's no consistency, there's a dissonance. Yeah. And being able to look at a band that I idolise as much as the 1975 and knowing that they've got the level of skill that they do and they still made that mistake, that's a... What, that's a huge lesson for someone who's lower down on the line. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're up there and you made that mistake. Shit, I'd better not make it down here then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then on the point of accepting critique from people that don't know what they're on about, like, most of the audience for your music doesn't is know. doesn't know fucking yeah. anything about music. Yeah. And not only do they know nothing about music, but like, even other musicians aren't going to know the nuances of your music, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're always going to think that you know better than all these people. But they're the audience. If if you show a song to a thousand people who know nothing about music and 900 of them say that the vocals are too loud, the vocals are too fucking loud, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like, you can choose whether to take that criticism or not okay, as well, but, but I think it's worth... At least hear it. Like, yeah, like, I, I like playing stuff I'm working on to like Abby or me mom or something mm -hmm. or, or going dad like do you think these vocals are too loud because yeah. like they're the people that are going to listen to it you know what I mean yeah, they're just exactly. like normal people who don't know like or even I, I find like when I play something to you like a mix or whatever and I know that you're sat over my shoulder somehow I hear it differently yeah. just because I know I know you and I sort of Almost like can preempt what you're going to say. Like I can listen to it as you while you're here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think like criticism should be taken from everyone because it it's so it, it might be, it, it might be valid. Your art so That's much. the thing. Like it might be bullshit, but also it might be valid. Yeah, and also it is a signifier of personal taste, which is really important to to artists. You need to know what you like. You yeah. know what I mean? Like say. So Notes on a Conditional Form suffers from a similar issue as Donda and as that one Drake album, and you covered both of those in your yeah, podcast, yeah. didn't you? In that, it's too fucking long. Yeah, yeah. It's too long, bloated, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's bloated, but then there's other albums, say like Yay or fucking King, in, in the Court of the Crimson King, mm. where it's like five songs, seven songs, feels way too short, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, oh, I know then. That what I like as a consumer yeah, is a yeah. ten track album, you know yeah. what I mean. So then I can then use that as a, a a means of understanding that what I should be making is a ten track album. Well, yeah, like t to go like ever so slightly off topic, I will bring it back. Mm. But like I've realised only recently that like, and it's so, it sounds so obvious to say, but I'm like, oh, like I like albums that are laid out this way, just because before I knew how albums should be laid mm. out that's not a thing but like the albums that I listen to have informed that mm. so like my way of like sequencing an album would very much be like dynamically would be mapped to like AM or yeah. like the first catfish in the bottom of an album like these these first albums that I would have bought and gone okay so this is what oh this is what an album is it's almost like I've thought that there's a proper way to do things the whole mm. time, but I'm only just realising that like my idea of the proper way is just based on the things the that, that you've I like. Yeah, like, what yeah. I've liked and the things that I got to first. And the willingness to critique stuff, I think, then also opens you up to when you don't critique something, then you're not 
like you know that you're not finding a problem there because it's yeah. not like I'm not critiquing it because I don't have anything to say. I know yeah. that I've got something to say normally, so if I don't have anything to say here, it must be sick, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like AM, hey, I've got very little to say that's like bad about that album. I've got loads of good shit to say about it. So I know that I like it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, or ideas as well, like say, yeah, albums having an identity, right? Mm -hmm. AM's got a very distinct identity, and it's something that you can kind of like while you're listening to to it, like you attach yourself, yourself to it, into it, yourself yeah, yeah. it. Whereas then, when you've got these really long albums or like really stylistically like sparse mm -hmm. albums, you can do that less, and that might be fine for some people who are just after singles, just as many singles as they can get. But I know now through the fact that I've critiqued these albums as having no identity, yeah. that if I was to write an album, it must have an identity, otherwise yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. even going to like my own stuff. But yeah, because it, again, and it comes down to the taste thing, like, we know that we actually quite like to, from time to time, we'll put an album on mm. and pl let it play through, yeah. you know what I mean? Whereas some people, especially now, move towards singles, but like you say, we've learned through going, oh, I actually like it when I can listen to this back yeah. to front and I'm, immerse myself in it so that's what i want to make you want to yeah. make the things that essentially you want to make an extension of the things that you've heard because yeah. you want to go okay well i like this this and this and this and how can i further that with my thing yeah um but to take it back to the criticism shit i wrestle with this quite regularly because obviously doing the podcast i'm like do a do i have a right to like critique this you have the right to your opinion yeah, yeah. well exactly because <laughs> also i think about like like music reviewers and i'm like yeah but who cares you know what I mean? like, yeah. like 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 if you're listening to an album just because anthony fantano said it's good like you need to start forming your own opinions so i'm like it can still be useful though because if you keep on hearing what he says is a one and what he's says as a 10 and you realize that you've got similar taste to him that yeah can inform the like, discovery of like new I, shit, I, you know what I, mean? I definitely now i think we went through a phase with the podcast where like it was we were almost just like saying controversial shit yeah you're doing hot it. takes and like and that's fine and it's fun and shit and it's funny to watch people yeah. react to that <laughs> but like i, I want to do it now like if we review something or we talk about an album or an artist or whatever, I want it to be like in the under the umbrella of like discussion. It's like okay, well, this is what I think. Mm. Like, do you agree? Do you like it? Like, what what do yeah. you think? Like, and open the door for people who have for me to go like, okay, this is my opinion, and people might watch it and go, oh, I agree with that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe yeah. we have similar taste and stuff. Um, but I also think like not only do I have a right, but also like. Do I want to add to that noise? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like <laughs> it's more a question to think of. Are you are you that asked? Yeah. Because is it worth saying stuff that you don't care about? Critique is great when you actually care about what you're saying. But if you know what, I wrote something. Uh, yeah, critique work in order to learn from it and not just for the sake of moaning. It's fun to critique shit yeah. just to be horrible. But if no one's gaining anything of it, if the artist isn't growing as an artist, if your yeah. work isn't growing as a result. Or if your personal taste isn't being refined and understood further, then yeah. fucking just shut up. And, and, you, no and you, can argue, you could argue that, like, where me and Jack on the podcast differ mm. from a lot of other people is, like, the, the only reason we do the podcast and the only reason we're interested... Like, we'd be having those conversations anyway mm. because we both make music yeah. and we love talking about the, how people make music. You know, like, I liked this about this album, but I didn't like this. And, like, like you're saying, it's, like learning what you like in order to better yourself so yeah. we have those conversations anyway and we just so happen that like the nature of the way i am these days is like i like to share conversations with my friends on the internet yeah. because i think it's interesting you know like if, if anyone watches this conversation yeah, be I, like, I want to see a hot take in the comments on this yeah that fucking informs the way i think going forward because yeah. and that's what that's what's so cool about the, the last one that we did this is like that was literally like i put my we were having that conversation anyway, yeah. and I put my phone up because, like, I was like, oh, I'll just, like, use a snippet of this in a vlog or something. And then I came to put the vlog together for that week that I'd been filming snippets. I was like, oh, this conversation is actually really interesting, and I'll just throw it up as a candid thing. And I like that because, like, we've gone well off track here, but, like, I enjoy the idea of... I have conversations with 
people in my life that I think are really interesting and like I know that I enjoy watching other people have interesting conversations mm. you know what I mean yeah. so like why why can't we just welcome into that you know and, and if you agree with our opinions mm. then great and if you you have your own opinions then you can share those or you can not share yeah. those and I think when it comes to me thinking about like do I have a place to criticize this especially like publicly you know like in a podcast or whatever these days I'm I'm very much like I'll say the negative things if I think there's negative things but I'll, I, I'm also doing it because I'm looking for positive things to say you know what I mean yeah um but it, it comes from a place of like interest rather than like me just going oh this is shit you know yeah and I think it depends on like the mentality that you criticize with as well whether or not you have a place to be making that criticism yeah. In fairness, which is a thought I've only really just had now. So say, for example, if I said to you, I refuse to listen to Taylor Swift at all costs because I don't like her personality. Yeah, yeah. It's not really a proper critique of her music, is it? Whereas if I said, I don't like listening to Taylor Swift because I find it formulaic yeah. in its structure, you know what I mean? Then then that That's just it. shows that I don't like formulaic music or I like when the formula is subverted, which is yeah, fine yeah. If, Again, f- figured out my taste by looking at what I don't like. Yeah. And it's useful everywhere, that idea. Like, I did it with education, you know what I mean? I figured out I wanted to do business because I realised I didn't want to do graphic design because yeah. I did graphic design when I don't like this. Yeah, yeah. So where do I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, it gets to me sometimes when you see people critiquing artists or whatever, and I'm like, I and, I, and I've been guilty of this in the past, and I'm like, you you you're like you don't you don't even listen to them really like you've mm. you've like heard like whatever songs on the radio like i don't necessarily like taylor swift as a as her like public persona mm. and the the some like the hit songs that i've heard i don't like but like so so i can go oh like i don't really like what i've heard of taylor swift but i wouldn't go like oh taylor swift's a terrible artist because yeah, like yeah. i haven't listened to most of her back catalogue you know what I mean exactly. like say if I said I find Sam Smith dead annoying mm. that doesn't make Unholy a worse song though yeah 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 the song is its own thing the yeah. artist is its own thing yeah. and to be fair you could criticise kind of either just accept that it's a separate thing because you can criticise someone's personality yeah people yeah. do it all the time you know what do you think the fucking legal system is it's like oh you're a mass murderer I'm gonna criticise that <laughs> <in jail." laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. if anything we've got a responsibility to critique and take on criticisms because how the fuck else are you gonna improve yeah what do you think democracy is I d- we don't like that tax system alright we'll change it yeah and but <laughs> you know I mean? and specifically artistically as well like I'm very much for like you have to do what you believe in mm. and you shouldn't like make music just because you think people are going to like it yeah but to some degree as well if people don't like it you kind of can't whinge because it's like i made this thing and put it out for public display yeah it, it, it it's like standing in the middle of like a town center and going don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like, <laughs> if you're one of these artists which you're like I don't care if anyone likes my music. I'm putting it out anyway. It's like grand, but then there's a like there is a chance no one's gonna like it. Yeah, yeah. So and, and also like depends what you want out of it. If you want to just make music, just do it. Then it's fine. Yeah. If you want to make a career out of it, listen that, to people. That's what I mean. Also, like, you might feel shittier about your music if everyone that you show it to goes, "This is shit," and tells you why. Then yeah. you can completely change your view of a song. Say if I took one of the songs off this board, I showed a load of my mates, and they were all like. Yeah, I don't really like your bass line, mate. Yeah. I'll listen to that bass line, and then I'll be like, oh, shit, I yeah, don't like it. Like, <laughs> but, at the, but at the very least, you go back and you question it. Yeah. You go, okay, could I have done this better? And, and maybe you come to the conclusion, oh, no, I actually really like what I did, mm. and I did it because I like it, and I don't really care what other people think, but that's yeah. fine. But, like, it's sometimes worth going, oh, shit, is this? like, Yeah, like, yeah you might be right. You like, I mean? <laughs> there's, there's two occasions, right, where we've put out... In fact, the only two occasions where we've ever done this were, like, you put a single and a B-side mm. out, right? And both times, everyone I've spoken to about it preferred the B-side. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you should have made that, like, the main song that you pushed and stuff. And I, was, I, I just haven't seen it with either of the songs. 
I but, agree. But I, I don't need to see it because I'm not the one listening to it to some degree. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, I, it's worth me taking that criticism on board because the or, like I did a thing and the audience went, this is good, but you maybe should have done this and it would have been better. And so now in future, because that's happened twice, I'll like rethink. I like yeah, double think. Which of these I'm... is actually better? Maybe show it to people before you yeah, put it yeah. out because that could have been the better. Mo- and you're not bastardizing your creation by doing that either. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you're not turning around and being like, "I'm going to completely change both songs." Yeah, yeah. You're going. These are the songs, and this one's better yeah. <laughs> in the eyes but... of you lot. And it's it's when you, I think, when you're making music just for the sake of making music yeah give a fuck about anyone else's opinions mm-hmm. mix it badly if it's just for you who cares it's for yeah. you you know what I mean it's like that painting man exactly it's for yeah, you like, I don't really care so, I just yeah. did it yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 it was for the joy of doing it yeah, you know exactly. what I mean whereas if then you were to package that up in a frame and take it to an art gallery and start trying to charge people money to look at it yeah and everyone says that's not worth the thousand pounds you're asking to sell yeah, it for. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, maybe. Like, maybe and, well, and, and that. especially when you're like, <laughs> like a working musician, because it's like, oh, the people that like gave me my job don't think I'm doing it very well. Mm. Well, fuck them. It's like no, like the, the the reason you get to make music for a living is because people <laughs> are buying your yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Like. The, the yeah, people are essentially stop listening to them. Then let's yeah. see how long that lasts. These you people know are essentially I mean? your boss. You know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say is, it's an interesting point because when we do, when we put shows on at the theatre, you open of a Friday, right? And from that Friday to the following Wednesday is what's called previews. Mm-hmm. So like the tickets are cheaper, and it, the press don't come and review it until that Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So you open, but then between that Friday and Wednesday, we're still coming in in the daytime to like, okay, let's change this scene, let's like re-rehearse this, let's tighten that up, because you, you're you essentially putting it on in front of an audience, seeing which bits work, taking that criticism and going, okay, before the press come and review it and we open it as the finished product, let's change it. Yeah. And that's, that's like valuable, because otherwise you'd put out the first thing that you thought of without listening to anyone's opinion, and it'd probably yeah. be shit. If you're in entertainment, you- the audience is king whether you fucking like it or yeah. not they bought the tickets even down to like so obviously you know I'm a huge fan of professional wrestling right yeah. and I know that for most people they probably wouldn't view the crossover of like ideas the same as me as a result yeah. but I see it very much as like a microcosm of the entertainment industry as a whole like yeah. in the individual matches so say for example you've got because it's all scripted and it's all audience interaction yeah. but it's not all scripted that's the thing of it it's sort of the scripted moments, but then the beats of the match are dictated by the audience quite heavily. So, yeah. say you've got the bad guy, and he's beating down the good guy for ages, and everyone's like, oh no, good guy, oh please, oh, get up and fucking do something about it, you know what I mean? Mm. And then they keep it going for too long and he doesn't do that. Like, they'll grow bored and the wrestlers will hear the quietness and then they'll be like, quick, let's get the good guy to rally for like five yeah, minutes yeah. to get them back into it, because... Listen to them, they're paying your fucking wages, you know what I mean? Like, if I went into a job at the, the factory there, cleaning, and I said, you know, I, 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 you know, I did my work and I did shit. Mm. Like, I just didn't clean the toilet properly, whatever, the skiddies down the back of my boss came to me and was like, the skiddies down the back of this bowl. Like, he's right to say that. Yeah. The same as if I was a professional musician and was doing a show and didn't practice the bass to the point where I couldn't play any of the songs, yeah. those people have the right to ask for their fucking money back. Yeah, or if I released yeah. a shit album, they have the right to say, yeah. make the next one better, please. You know what I mean? But, but this, is, this is the duality, because there's... The duality of like art versus product, right? Mm. So like, like you were saying, you can do something that's artistic, and you're like, okay, this is exactly how I wanted it to be. I don't mind if other people don't like it, and that is fine. Mm. That I'm, I'm all for that. I've done that many a time, yeah. <laughs> where I've gone, this is it, and no one's like it. <laughs> but also, like, if you are trying to like essentially sell it, mm. you have to consider the product aspect a little bit, and I'm, yeah. I, I definitely don't think you should compromise the art for the product. But you have to be aware that, like, okay, this is going out to an audience. And 
maybe I don't care what they think, but they're gonna think something, and I might hear about it, so I have to yeah. be okay with that, you know. Um, because like, we about we find in your goals to an extent, isn't it? Some yeah. people really like really highly artistic shit as well, and in that can be the unique selling point. If you're purely about the art, yeah. there might be other artistically minded people that like it. Whereas, depends what your goal is. If you're looking for success in the music industry. You and everything that you do is a product. You're yeah. putting it in packaging That's... and putting a barcode on it and everything, you know what I mean? Whereas like if you're just making music because you like it, yeah, you I... don't have to really consider that at all. And then the ones, to be fair as well, that do the best are the ones that do a blend of both. They've got their own unique artistic voice mm. that they know people are going to like. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's the Yeah. I um I got Flack off TikTok a while ago. Shock horror. Oh, imagine um, that. Um, it's all right. They're allowed to criticize. <laughs> exactly, and, and that's fine because it will, and because it did make me rethink what I was saying a little mm. bit. Uh, for a clip from the podcast that I posted where I was talking about, um, I can't remember exactly what like the the segment was, but it, I was basically talking about like, oh, if <laughs> it was, and again, this is me. Like, I should I should have said this in a better way. <laughs> But my, my opening statement was, like, uh, unsigned bands are the incels of the music industry. <laughs> yeah. You're right, though. Right. Like. Right. And, because and, and in that, like, section, in the, in the TikTok, I was making the argument of, like, if you... Uh, the very, if, it's everyone else's fault. It can't yeah, yeah, possibly yeah. be me. Like, like, yeah. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, if, you, if you're going to sell it, you have to be aware that, mm. like, you need to sort of you need to be marketable to a degree yeah. and a lot of people in the comments will be like well it's just art though it doesn't need to be marketable you should make the thing that you want and i'm like yeah you should but also if you're trying to sell it it's yeah. probably marketable it's about defining your goals you know, you know what, what i mean if these indie bands want to just write music for the sake of writing music that is absolutely fine i don't care how good your music is it's for you anyway but if you're like an unsigned band out here writing whatever you want to write and then being like why does support no one support my band? Support yeah. local music. It's because I'm local. It's because this. It's because that. I'm yeah. finding a million excuses why people don't like your shit. It's like they just don't like it though. Like yeah. it, it doesn't matter where someone's fr if someone from Norway listens to one of our songs, they're not gonna know where we're from and yeah. whether we're signed and what reach we've got. All they're gonna know is whether or not they like the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I used to go out with someone who. Uh, are we naming names on the internet? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I won't dox them, like. Um, will I be able to guess from the story? Uh, maybe, yeah. I bet will. So, so, <laughs> so I, I dated someone for a bit, mm. and they were like, they they had no core like friendship group. They would they'd sort of like jumped from friendship group to friendship group, and they were often like caught in drama or like talking about like how how like other people were like shit. But, and I'm like, is it, I, is, I, it, I, is it is it is it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, and I'm thinking like, it got to a point where I'm thinking like, but you're the common denominator. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, like maybe you're the really issue. three sets of ten people all agreed yeah, <laughs> yeah. independently. And of that's when you need to listen to someone's criticism, you know, because yeah. and but also that's the that's the the big thing that we're brushing over here is like if the question is can you critique people more skilled than you. As the person with the skill, you need to know that you haven't got all the skill. Mm. You know, like it, it, it's, Ooh, it, it's, it's that thing a of point like I wanted to make because they don't have the objective ear of someone that doesn't know what the fuck. Yeah, like you can about. have as much skill as you want, but like sometimes you're just too close to the art. Or so, or yeah, but, yeah. or even you can have as much like you could have you'd be really talented, but you, there's always there's still gonna be a a gap at the. At the edge mm. of your knowledge somewhere, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson said something about like needing to be like confident enough to know that you know what you're doing, mm. but also like know that you are still a bit stupid. Yeah, like, <laughs> completely. Um, so one thing I was going to say then as well is so the when you're criticising someone that is better than you, that can also be yeah. You know, it's it's a good opportunity to attempt to reach them it's another step up the ladder for you because you've noticed something that they did wrong and yeah. you're also noticing all the other shit that they did right so it's like oh i've learned a lesson at the same time as you yeah, yeah. that's mad I, yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah. 
I was listening to a, a Coldplay in a few the other day, and Chris Martin was saying like he feels really lucky because he thinks like half the reason that they've lasted for like mm. twenty years and they're all still friends is because they've got like forty years worth of bands before them, mm. and they go like they're listening to people go like. like oh, I wish we'd have just, like, taken a break instead of split up, and, oh, I wish we'd have done this album like this, and I wish we'd have treated each other better, and, yeah. like, and he's learned from that, you know what I mean? And you, you should be able to do that, and to do that, you sort of have to critique the things that have gone by to be like, okay, well, this was good, but, like, maybe yeah. if they'd have just done that. they have done better? And, yeah. and I'll do it better. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, what was the other point I was going to make? Uh, oh, yeah, so the objective here thing, the, the idea of yeah. listening to someone's opinion who knows less than you. So say if we're mixing a song, right, and we mix the vocals in a certain way, and our justification for it is, yeah, there's another frequency over here that it's kind of like, you know, it bounces off kind of weird, mm. so we've, we've mixed it like this, we put it like here in the mix. Mm. Right? And then you show that song to a load of people, and then all of them go, the, the vocals don't sound like they've been mixed right. If we then turned around and got hyper defensive yeah. and was like, no, but we did it because this, and oh, we might even get them to agree by showing them all of the files and yeah. all the plugins. Go, See, look, you can't do it that way. Yeah. Number one, there probably is a way you just yeah. actively try not to figure it out because you probably struggled the first time and that's why it's not that good now. Yeah. And secondly, it's just because there's a justification in your mind as to why you did Finish whatever point you were saying. Go what were you saying? Shit, I forgot my point I was saying. Uh, <laughs> say if someone's overly critical mm. and they do the thing with it, carrying on, carrying on with it, like a lot of those criticisms might not actually be right and so the case-by-case -case approach is like absolutely necessary because sometimes they might be right to be fair. One person could be right and wrong at separate times, you know what I mean? So like, it's probably worth doing that with your music or with your personal life or anything. Like, someone says something and then you go is that accurate and be honest with yourself and it might hurt but yeah, yeah. whatever you're gonna have to you know you... that's one of the hardest things in life yeah, it's, it's, it's to actually be honest with yourself yeah because to some degree in that it, honesty, it means... you might realize that the criticism actually isn't really accurate yeah. as well you know what i mean like if someone criticizes you for cheating on them and then you go wait i didn't cheat on you yeah it's not a valid criticism where if someone goes, you really hurt my feelings when you said that thing about my dead mum. It's like, oh, what the fuck, I shouldn't have said the thing about your dead mum. <laughs> you know what I mean? Both equally wild examples. <laughs> well, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what the overarching point is. But but so, but so yes. Neither, because yeah, I thought yes. this like a month ago. <laughs> like, but, but so the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can.